Hello there and welcome to the channel again. Um, so I did a stream the other day. It was just a short one, a lot shorter than I was actually anticipating. However, it's school holidays. Um, so as you can see, I was uh, making the most of getting the action going from where we left off in the previous video. And I'd taken the step of invading the Byzantine Empire with whatever I had um, and also chucked in a cheeky invasion of the Novgorodians. Now the stream that I managed uh, the other day went brilliantly uh, aside from the fact that I had the same issue as I had last time and that was my mic was for some reason not connected in OBS. Uh, I don't know why it keeps doing it, I have to have a proper play around with it. However, um, this is a slightly shortened version of the video. Um, the magic of doing a very vague, slight bit of editing that I'm really not that qualified to do. Um, but just to fiddle around. Uh, now if you see Hungry Dan at the bottom right hand corner there, this is the reason why I've kicked it off. Um, my invasion of the Byzantine Empire. And that's basically because the Egyptians decided, right, we've had enough of this war with the uh, uh, Byzantians, we are going to go full scale. Um, and they took those two territories, which I'd been building up my forces to be able to do myself. So I was a little bit peeved, um, as you can understand, so I kicked off a full scale invasion. Um, and thought, why not the um, Novgorodians at the same time? Um, and then I wasn't going to invoke, invade Lithuania, I didn't think I had the troops. And then I suddenly remembered that I had I've started just building more and more troops um, to prepare for this invasion. But because I'd gone early, I thought, actually, let's just go for broke, go for all of it at the same time. Um, I even noticed that I was going to need to shuffle around my navies um, and that actually I had a couple of um, relatively decent sized navies because the Byzantians actually do, they usually have a good amount of um, naval power but for some reason it appears to have mostly disappeared aside from this, this one here by Genoa um, and I think there's a couple down near Malta um, but I was pretty much prepared to be able to take them on um, and kick things going um, so yeah as you can see shuffling everything around chucking lots into Lithuania um, at which point I then suddenly go hey why don't we go for Corsica um, there is no reason why not to give it a go um, nothing really stopping me um, and yeah, it's at that point that I suddenly went, hey, Corsica or bust. So, um, I mean, my other thinking was that uh, Rhodes had virtually nothing in it. So I figured that would be a pretty decent place for them to be able to fall back to. Um, and then basically not be able to get out of. Um, and I should, could crush anything that was remaining. Um, so yeah there was there was see lots and lots of movement i'd been i'd built in virtually every single uh territory um so long as it didn't need some recruitment for itself um and yeah i was pumping them out i needed just something just enough to uh keep the sardinians happy um but yeah, this is where it was kicking on. Let's see what time is. Well, we've still got another seven minutes of me babbling on. Um, so yeah, this was this was productive. Um, you know, there was the just the look out of how many territories can I actually take in one go? Um, and I had been prepared to start the um, fight off probably in in this turn or we turn after um, had the Egyptians not forced my hand um, so yeah this was in for a penny in for a pound um, 
I mean, it was just the, was it three factions left? The English, the Novgorodians, wow. and the, um, oh yeah, four Byzantians and Egyptians. Uh, I mean, at this point, I was considering where I was going to go next um, in regards to the, just the game in general, to be honest. Um, figuring that I must have been pushing towards that middle um, victory condition uh, rather than total victory, going for just the, was it 60%? Um, simply because every time I've played it, um, you get around that, I, I always have found that you get to that sort of time period you've got on it to the beating point and then you just get rebellion all across um, everywhere all the factions suddenly decide they're going to come back you know you've got the uh, French the Holy Roman Empire the Spaniards the uh, not entire I can't remember so much if the um, Muslim factions do it quite so much but there's definitely the Christian factions and uh, Catholic factions suddenly go hey we are back for rebellion and it just suddenly flames up all across Europe. Um, so I kind of figured maybe this first time around, this coming back to it for the first time in quite uh, many years, I thought I would potentially just go for um, the short victory and then consider what else could be done. Um, here I am, look, looking through the potential options for new campaigns, whether I would do one with another army, uh, another country, whether I would go for the Viking campaign, which I have played a couple of times. It's always been quite fun. It's some good, um, entertaining um, factions to take into account, um, or whether I would change the period, whether I would really look at what's going on there, you know, look at that green sort of mustard colour on the right hand side, that's the um, Mongols coming in and invading, so, you know, there's a bit of a shake up in the actual look of the map at that time period, so whether it would be interesting to really start from that, which I don't really think I've done so much of in the past, um, uh, I think it was considering potentially an early period one, but with maybe one of the Muslim factions. Um, but I was basically getting to the point, what's the time frame? Yeah, yes, so I was getting to this point where I was ready to hit the magic button, you know, end the year, um, crack it on, um, and really just go for broke. Um, there is plenty of scope to be just doing it, you know, just grinding it on. So yeah, I, I hit that button and we can now have a check out some standard shuffling around as you would expect, bits and pieces here and there. And then all the victory results. Um, capture of Finland, straight out, no, um, nothing to take. A cracking result here. Only lost 200. Um, you know, you know me. I like to churn through. I don't really like to sit there and do the battles. Maybe that's something for another video where I try out one of the battles. But it's never really been my thing. Um, now that's a pretty decent victory. Look, we did two and a bit times the amount of damage that they did. Um, Kiev taken lovely just ramping see there's only 500 difference in that one um but i th there's they had a lot of peasants in a lot of their armies um and just random sort of units that kind of said no these guys aren't particularly good um and so yeah i was conquering here there and everywhere they retreated quite a bit um which you know is always a good sign um ended up the ransoms they didn't want to pay and there we go that was a complete and utter surprise to me um i, I suddenly came across the 60 percent of europe victory which i was not expecting at that point I, I think i'd kind of never considered 
what percentage of the map I suppose there, there might I doubt there's even a place where you can check it but um, yeah just kind of go in what I did not anticipate any kind of, uh, of victory at this stage um, so I was umming and ahhing as to whether I would go ahead and claim it as I was saying before um, and I figured yeah go for it I suppose I do have the save games so I can always go back um, but here is the beautiful cutscene which I will leave you with um, the explanation of the domination of the, uh, the English um, if you have an opinion of, as to what you want me to do next whether it's another faction or country during this period whether it's the Vikings um, or anything like that then just um, drop a like and a comment the rulers of a green and pleasant uh, land I'll catch you on the, the flip kings side. of England grew rich and powerful in their island kingdom and their people were prosperous and merry the sea served as a moat and their ships as wooden walls protecting all from invasion from their royal seat in London, they also ruled many lands beyond the sea, while their navies ranged far across the oceans, bringing the rich bounty of the world to their doors. There we go, see? And, uh, there we are. That's the end. Chuck a like, and I'll, uh, and either tweet me or, uh, Put a comment down the bottom just to what you what you want me to want to see next. Okay, take it steady everybody, stay safe and catch you on the flip side.